Good evening, Rock Church Facebook, my brothers and sisters on YouTube and Twitter. I'm Pastor Robert Lewis Stevenson. This is the Rock Church family. This is Wondrous Wednesday. Yep, we on the corner, man, of Washington and Central. We got these tacos out here. We're feeding people, man, physically, and we're going to feed them spiritually. This is the day that the Lord has made. He tells us we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. My God, my God. I'm rejoicing in the Lord because I have seen some people get delivered. I have seen some people ask for prayer. People have come and asked, how can I be a part of what you're doing? I just told them, man, Jesus welcomes all people because they realize there's only one way to the Father and you got to go through Jesus. Now, it's time for our Bible study, man, live in this community. I want you all to get ready for what God has to say in and through each and every one of us based on the Word of God. Let us pray. Father God, we bless you. We thank you for the opportunity to gather today on this corner, this wondrous Wednesday. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to collaborate, to be able to feed the people physical food, and now we get to feed them a spiritual designed by you, oh God, a good meal, a meal going to fill their spiritual bellies up, God. So open up their minds, their hearts, draw men unto you that they may be saved, and God, that they'll know the truth, and the truth will set them free. Have your way in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Well, oh, well, oh, well. We're going to say amen. We bless God. I'm talking about how we've been serving man this year. There's so many people out here have been getting served so far. Man, I'm thanking God for the opportunity to keep doing the work of God. Now we get to spend some time to think about what God has to say. Today I want to talk about just kind of living in this fast pace we live in. Living in this consumer-driven society. We always try to do things and pursue and have these material things and all these things and, you know, these possessions. And we realize, and sometimes we don't realize, they're just temporal. They're temporal, man. And they bring a temporal satisfaction. And after a while, you just don't, you, you, you get tired of some of the satisfaction. But boy, 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 I found out for myself Man, we are called to see something greater, far more enduring, the eternal joy. God bless you through the relationship with God. I entitled today's message, Eternal Joy versus Worldly Pleasures. Come on, somebody. Here's what the Bible says. In 1 John 2, 15, it says, Do not love the world or anything in it. If anyone loves the world, the love for the Father is not in them. You got to hear what the Word of God says. I didn't, I, I didn't write the Word of God. I know how to read it. Do not love the world. Do not love the world or anything in the world. I want you to think about what do you really love about the world. He says, listen, there's one thing to have a passion for something, but we ain't called to love the world. Why? Because anybody who loves the world, the love of the Father cannot be in them. Because you can't love both the world and the Father. Now, this is the reason why. Because the world refers to the values and desires that are contrary to the will of God. In other words, things like materialism, things that we go to the ends of the earth to give things and, 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 and try to have all the materialism, that's going to try to make you feel good. You know well as I know you got stuff when you have it for a little while, and after you had it for a while, it's just one of those things you put in the closet, one of those things you put in the corner, one of those things that you just put in the garage, but you strive to get it. Some other things of the world that is temporary is greed. Man, we have more than enough. And you know well as I know, man, greed is a real thing. And guess what? When you love the world, we also pursue the passions and pleasures of the world. And all that stuff just keeps us away from the Word of God. It keeps us from walking with God. It keeps us from what? Man, listen, sharing the things of God. And I found out for myself, when we get to that place, we start drifting away, man, and all these other resources, man, don't matter no more, and we try to figure out how to make ourselves happy. You can't get happy until you understand the joy of the Lord. But I want you to understand something. There's a downfall that comes with worldly pleasure. A downfall comes with worldly pursuits. One of the downfalls I found out for myself that comes with it is what? Trying to satisfy the flesh. <laughs> it's a downfall. You can never satisfy. Do you know the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, in verse 10 and 11, says it this way. I deny myself nothing my eyes desire. I refuse the 
I refuse my heart no pledge. This is Solomon. He says, my heart took the light in all my labors, and this was the reward for all my toil. Yet when I subvert all that my hands have done and what I have toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. Solomon said to himself, listen, I've tried it all. I've done it all. I've seen it all. I've heard it all. I've touched it all. And he says, listen, it's just a meaningless thing. And I know sometimes it doesn't seem meaningless. When you end some of the things in the pursuit, you try to make yourself feel good about yourself. And you know what? I'm telling you, if Solomon said it's meaningless, it's a chasing after the wind, and nothing was gained under the sun, listen, we got to get to a point and trust the Word of God. Because when we trust the Word of God, we'll understand that this temporary satisfaction, it don't last long. And also, when you're going down this downfall of worldly pursuit, something else happens, spiritual emptiness. What you say? I'm talking about we start focus on world gains to lead spiritual emptiness. This, this happened when we prioritize God over the things of the world. That means we chase after things. And when we get to chasing after things, we start neglecting our spiritual growth. In our, in our relationship with God because we don't have the time no more because we're trying to do the things we want to do. That's why the Bible said it this way in Matthew 16, 26. It says, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? There's a forfeit that can happen when you try to gain all the things of the world. It says, oh, what can anyone gain in exchange for their soul? Nothing. Nothing of the world, nothing of the world can ever give you the pleasure of the pleasure of walking with God, seeking God, knowing God, following God. He says you can gain all the, all the things of the world, you can accumulate all these things, the wealth, the material wealth, the material things, and you're just wasting your time because you're fulfilling your soul. And because of that, the world began to put these grips and these vices on us. And we start loving people in all the wrong places and all the wrong ways. And the love of God is, is, is not absent. It's, it's, it's not present, but it's absent. And when that happens, nine times out of 10, people go through this revolving door, can never get to a place of thriving spiritually. They're just barely surviving. And before you know it, the, come, the enemy come in and steal, kill, and destroy because there's temporal going after worldly value. Now, if that's the case, I want to understand how I can actually go out and pursue the eternal joy that the Word of God tells us. And this eternal joy is this lasting joy that comes with deep relationship with God. It's a living according to the will of God. It is the joy that's not dependent on our circumstances or our possession, but it's rooted in the eternal promise of God. And I'm here to tell you that the word of God says it this way. It says in Matthew 6.33, it says, But first seek the kingdom of his righteousness, and all these things be given to you as well. If we go after seeking God, the first thing we do, when we go after that, I'm telling you, we begin to fall in love with the ways of God, the will of God, and the word of God. He says, seek me. Just like we, we know how to seek stuff. We know how to go out the things. We have the heart desires, and we put all our energy towards doing whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish. But he says, I'll give you a new thing to seek. I want you to seek the kingdom of God. I want you to seek me, and the way you get to seek me is through the word of God. It's through understanding what God does in the word. He gave us a word so that we can have life more abundantly. He says, hey, I've given you something through Genesis from Revelation. He says, all scripture, it is God breathed, and it's used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. From Genesis to Revelation gives us an opportunity to put this word into our lives. It gives us an opportunity to be guided, to be strengthened, to have an opportunity to be able to know how to do life under the conditions of the word of God, right? Under the conditions. So that word of God gives us the opportunity to have this real fulfillment, this real joy, this real understanding. And I'm talking about you're not dependent on your circumstance and your possession to make sure that you have this eternal promise 
the eternal promise is coming from the eternal God through the word of God. Now, that's if we seek his kingdom. Another thing is, when you understand the eternal joy after seeking the kingdom and going through the things of God, you begin to cultivate this contentment that comes from seeking the kingdom of God. Man, I'm talking about a contentment that don't drive you to go after your emotions. Things that sometimes we get emotionally connected to, we sometimes we, we follow our emotions. We follow our feelings. We follow some of the things we think. We follow our, our peers. We follow what's going on in social media. And all that stuff has a way, man, try to push the real joy of the Lord out of your life. That stuff try to get you to a place where you don't understand that uh, God want to give you a, a, a opportunity to drink this good old word that gives you the, the way of satisfaction. Here's what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, in verse 11 and 13. He says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need. He says, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstance. Have you ever learned to be content with your circumstance? Have you learned to be content and know that God is able to do immeasurable more than we can actually imagine in your life today? Are you, have you learned to be content to embrace that God's word going to work it all out in your life? Have you learned how to be content to understand that God, you as a husband, can help you to be the husband that God called you to be? You as a wife to help you be the bride that God called you to be? You being single, help you in your singleness? You being a parent to help you be able to parent well? Have you got to a place where you're content to know that God's going to work through your circumstances and he's not going to allow you to stay there where you're at. If it's not healthy, he want to lead you to a place where fruit is abundant in your life, that fruit is really there to last in your life. God didn't create us so we can walk away from him. He created us so that we can be in and through him and be able to walk the walk that God has called us to walk. That's why Paul says, hey, I know what it is to be in need. He says, I know what it is to have plenty. He says, I've learned the secret of being content in any, in every situation. There's a secret in being content. And that secret in being content is not pursuing worldly passion. It's not pursuing worldly things. It's not pursuing the things that's going to cause you to walk away from God. The secret is this. I'm embracing surrendering. I'm embracing the fact that God will is going to be in my life, and I want to align my life up with the will of God because the Word of God sets a pattern in my life that I will be able to be with God. And I'm talking about when you are with God, you'll begin to understand how the Spirit works, how the Spirit talks, how the Spirit convicts, how the Spirit begins to massage you for what? Your time of It's time for all of us to get to a place where we say, I surrender. It's a time for all of us to get to a place that I surrender and I'll let your will be done in my life. It's time for us to be restored, regenerated. It's time for us to get to a place so that we can be delivered and set free. But you can't be delivered and set free with worldly passions. You got to say, I give up. You got me cold with the right. I'm dead the right. You can have your way. You can go ahead. I do what you call me to do. That's why Paul said it that way. He says, whether fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or what, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Oh, my God. I'm talking about what kind of strength you're trying to pull from. What kind of strength you think you're going to have. You want the strength of God or you want the, the, the unnecessary things that Satan's going to tell you. See, I'm talking about strength comes from denying yourself and taking up your cross. You ought to say amen. It is time when we get to a place where we stop falling for the okie though and start saying, God, my Savior, God, my Father, God that's in heaven, that looks high, looks low, and I'm talking about the God who's given us all supply. That's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He strengthens me because I'm following Christ, and I denounce the things of the world, and I want the things that God has for me, it's for me. Can't nobody take anything that God has me assigned to. Can't nobody take anything that God has for me laid out for. Can't nobody take anything that God told me I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God, I thank you that Rock Church is here on this corner and we're doing things through Christ. 
We're serving the community. We're praying with the community. We're worshiping with the community. We're declaring the decree that the community of God is in this place. This may have been a doorway in some people's mind, but we're in the Austin communion, and we're talking to the people of God, and we're letting God people know that God loves them, and God is able to do immensely more than we can ask or imagine. Start imagining that God wants to strengthen you. Start imagining that God wants to embrace you. Start imagining that it's time for you to be content, whether well-fed or whether in need. Well and plenty, surrender it all to God, and you will never be the same. Come on, y'all, let's give God a hand of praise. My God, my God, he's able. All you got to do is say, God, come into my life. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you were buried, and on the third day you rose with all power. The power that I can now denounce, the worldly passions, the worldly pursuits, that I can say, now nah, I'm ready for the kingdom work. I want to seek your kingdom. I want to seek your righteousness. And I want to be content in all situations because I know my strength comes from the Lord and I can all I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. My God. Let the word of God do what it does. We don't own the right to the music, but we own the right to get our worship on. We own the right to get our praise on. We own the right to love God. We on the right to love people. We on the right to love to serve. And that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Because God assigned us to be here. And I pray to God that you decide to make up your mind that I'm not going to go after worldly pursuit and worldly passion because I want this eternal joy because it outweighs all of the things of the enemy. I thank God. And I want to show y'all some of the things that God is doing. He's been doing this, man, since 6 o'clock. Just been out here. Just been out here. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My, 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 my. Yes, Lord. We're not forgotten, y'all. Austin, you're not forgotten. You're not forgotten, Austin. He knows my name. This is praise and worship. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, they got their praise and worship on. He knows my name. Because you're not forgotten. You're not forgotten. You're not forgotten. That's right. That's right. Rock Church, Austin Community, you're not forgotten. That's why we are here representing the Jesus that sits high and look low. We got special occasion right here. Right here, man. This is where the tacos at right here. This is what we do right here. They get in line and they get the tacos, man. They're working it right here. Come on, y'all. They're working it right here, whatever. This is what it's about. Uh, yes, Lord, good neighbors campaign out here. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, this live in the awesome community. Worship, wondrous Wednesday. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He knows our name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. They hunt their horn. We got them worshiping. We got them worshiping on this corner. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hit that horn if you love Jesus. We're planting these seeds, man. We're planting the seeds of love, planting the seeds of Jesus out here on these corners. God Almighty, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, well, it's happening. It's happening, y'all. It's happening. This has been going on since 6 o'clock. Lives been long. They're coming up that we're praying for, ministering to them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is live. This is live in the city of Chicago on the west side of Shaktown. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Hope to the hopeless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Hey, here y'all go, here y'all go. Yes, sir. Let the Lord use you. Let the Lord use you. And yeah, we stand in line ministering the whole time. Yes, sir. That's right. Get your praise on. 
That's all we're here to do, y'all. Come on now. Come on, man. Listen here, we done served 100 so far. We're not gonna stop until 8 o'clock, okay? 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, that's when we stop. Every Wednesday, every Wednesday, serving these people, man. Man, I had somebody come up to me today. That lady cried, man. She cried in my arms. She was in her car, and she heard the music. And she seen the sign said, Hump your horn if you love Jesus. She pulled over, and her friend said, What are you doing? We're supposed to be going to the store. She said, God is calling me out here. That lady came out standing in line. And I'm in line ministry. She said, can I talk to you? I said, absolutely. She said, I need prayer. And she broke down. And I'm saying to her, I said, listen. She said, I believe in God. I've had some trials. And I'm ready to get back where I need to be in Jesus. God sent me on this corner. I was supposed to have been at the grocery store. She talked to me for 35 straight minutes crying, giving a testimony, confessing. I'm telling you, this is what God will have the people of God to do. If we don't get out of our house, move from our seats to our streets, to the streets, you'll never know. These stories I hear, God has ordained us, put that spirit in us. He gave it to us. He gave it to us so that we can have this eternal life. And why are we getting eternal life? We don't go and share this gospel with somebody else that need eternal life. She said, Pastor, I needed this. You don't understand I need it. See, I understand, because I got my testimony. You have your testimony. But if we don't move from our seats into the streets and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, they share the good news of Jesus, we are remiss. Let us not be remiss, brothers and sisters. It's time for to join the campaign of Matthew 20. You can do it. I don't care who you are. You want to come out on Wednesdays, come out on Wednesdays. We use you. For the kingdom of God, God wants to use you to do good work. He said, I don't live in Chicago, so how can I say I'll be a support? Go to www.rockabiosalvation.com. Hit the donate button. Say, I want to serve. I want to be a part of it. Use your treasure to be a part of what we're doing. And I'm telling you, these people, they're hungry and we're serving them. Not only they're hungry on physical food, but they're, no, they're coming back for the spiritual enlightenment. Boy, it changes lives. You gotta hear me on this, y'all. You gotta hear me on this. It changes lives. It changes lives. Woo! It changes lives. The gospel changes lives. Your testimony will change people's lives. God will use you to draw men to Him. Be that beacon of light. If you want to help us, go to www.rockabiosalvation.com. Hit the donate button. Go share this message and hope somebody hold on and get it and say, I want some of it. We're located 5628 West Washington on the west side of Chicago. Our services start at 1030 sharp. And you're going to get love because we love God. We love people. We love to serve. Be a part of it. I'm Pastor Rob Lewis. This is the Rock Church family. Realize, man, eternal joy versus worldly passion. Turn the joy gonna win every time. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Pastor Robert Lewis Stevenson. God's blessings on you. Amen.